Mr. Speaker, it's so important that we work with experts um, in the medical community to develop strong legislation, and we are incredibly fortunate to have, as one of our co-leads on this bill, one of our doctors in Congress. So I want to thank him for all of his incredible work getting us to where we are today, and I yield three minutes to my colleague from California, Dr. Ami Barra. Did you say three minutes? Three minutes. Gentleman's recognized for three minutes. Well, thank you. I wanted to um, first thank my colleague from the great state of Washington, um, Ms. Del Benny, as well as my, my good friend from Pennsylvania, Mr. Kelly, as well as my fellow doctor, um, Bouchon. This was how legislative processes should work. You identify a challenge, you work on it, you work on it in a bipartisan way, but you put the American patient first, because that's what this is about at the end of the day. How do we give efficient quality care to America's patients, and in this case, America's seniors. You know, uh, I've been practicing medicine, you know, going back to 1995, and yeah, there's, I've used a fax machine back in 1995. This is about coming into the 21st century, modernizing the practice of, of medicine. It's also about letting us do what we went to medical school for, what we did residency for. After four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, anywhere from three to seven years and longer of residency training, Doctors want to be doctors. They want to take care of their patients. And yes, there is a role for prior authorization in limited cases. There's also a role to go back and retrospectively look at how care is being delivered. But what's happening today is a travesty. It wasn't the intention of prior authorization. It's you know, a prior authorization process gone awry. And let me give you some examples. You know, when I talk to my former colleagues, the folks I went to medical school with, they spend up to 40% of their time on paperwork, on administrative burden, on doing things that don't enhance clinical care or enhance their ability to take care of patients. You know, we heard from Dr. Murphy talk about the delays in care. That adds cost, that adds time, and in some cases, it occasionally will um, you know, potentially kill a patient. That isn't what this is about. This is about providing America's seniors efficient care, reducing the, the burden and allowing doctors to do what we went to medical school for, take care of patients. Let's bring this into the 21st century and let's start to put the patient central in American healthcare. And that's how we're gonna actually lower costs of care, deliver better outcomes and improve satisfaction. We see a lot of doctors leaving the practice of medicine because of that administrative burden, the hassle factor. That doesn't improve care, that actually um, makes care worse. So let's move into the 21st century, let's deliver that care, and let's um, move forward. This is a, a shining example of how Congress should work. You know, if you think about it, 320 plus members of Congress in a bipartisan way of the House support this legislation. All of the doctors in Congress support this legislation. You've got Senate support of this legislation. Over 500 groups, as my colleague said, you know, support this legislation. It is about good medicine. It is about taking care of the patients. I also want to recognize my prior senior healthcare LA, Colleen Nguyen, who worked incredibly hard on this, as well as my current um, healthcare legislative assistant, Harsh Patel. As Congresswoman Del Benny pointed out, it's the staff that makes us look good. So thank you. Everybody should vote for this, and we should pass it unanimously. Thank you. Gentlemen's time has expired.